Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, let's hallow his name. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I welcome all the online viewers globally. Thank God for you and thank God for what he's doing. My immediate family in the kingdom, Kingdom Restoration International. Warm and wonderful kingdom greetings to you. Today, there is a lot to be said, so I want to get straight into it. I just really want God to permeate the very atmosphere of your internal being. Allow him to just do what he does best. Be God to you. So right where you are, wherever you are, just avail yourself. Make yourself pliable in his hands. Just rest in him and allow him to have his way as you receive the download into your spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. The subject today is distinguished. Tell your neighbor, distinguished. Hallelujah. And the objective is for us to declare that we are full, fruitful, and useful. Come on, say it. Full. Say, I am full. Fruitful and useful. That's right. That's you I'm talking about. In Genesis, hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, it says, Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So here we see the allness, the oneness, the completeness of God making a fully synchronized, approved decision to produce and release. You should start shouting all now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's he said, let's make man. It brings a smile to my face. I, I sense the joy expressed in this process. You know, I, I don't know all the details, but it sounds as though God was really happy about this. He was really glad. He was really excited. He was filled with joy because he is joy. Hallelujah. About this process. This was something that God did with great excitement. He said, let us make man. It was like, come together. All of me going to point to all of man. Are you getting that sense of excitement? Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. You see, man is different from every other, um, or every or man is different from every other creature and every other order of created being because. He has created consistency or he has been created in consistency with God. So unlike any other aspects of creation, you are distinct in your moral, intellectual, and spiritual capabilities. You see, deity and humanity, although not the same, God made them compatible. And I am so glad about it. Hallelujah. Can you wrap your mind around the intrinsic value of human life? Can you, can you really comprehend the value of human life? Being made in the image of God is a major factor distinguishing humanity from the animals and other physical entities. You were made in the image of God. I was made in the image of God. We were made in the image of God. It's like, it's as though God was saying, let man look and sound like me. Yeah. 
Let man possess my qualities, mannerism, character, and heart. Let man, you know, possess spirituality. Let man be made for communion with me, God. It's, it's as though God just, just, he just forms something that he alone can relate to in a very, in, in the highest manner there is, in, in the highest way. It's like, it's like I want to be able to talk to this creation. And I want them to talk to me and make decisions to serve me and to worship me. The body of man must be regarded as the first and final receptacle to house the spirit of God. It's as though he said, make that, I'm going to make man the first and final receptacle. Hallelujah. The vessel to house my spirit on the earth. Hallelujah. He said, let them have dominion over. I like how he said it. He didn't just say let them have dominion. He literally set us over whatever we're supposed to have dominion over. Hallelujah. Are you with me? I, I, I'm excited. I need to calm down and just, just go with this. <laughs> you see, uh, it's as though he said, I release my power and authority in them and teach them how to activate. Hallelujah. And how, how to activate what I've given on to them and how to use it. And we, we need to understand that while we are using this, God is not leaving us alone. He said he promised he would be with us at all times. You see, with, with his dunamis and exousia, he's saying they shall have ruling and controlling power over the earth. It's with God exousia and with his dunamis, we would have that kind of power over the earth. Then God said, bless them. And God said, bless them. He said, bless them. And, but he didn't say bless them. He blessed us. Do you understand this? He blessed mankind. He blessed mankind. So man's initiation was a blessing from God, his maker. God signed on a dotted line without hesitation. He placed a stamp of approval on man. He blessed man. Without the goodness of God's blessing, human life would not only be unbearable, but literally impossible. Inherent in this command is that man should be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So after he blessed them, he said, he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Man cannot fill or, 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 or man cannot fulfill God's plan for his life on earth unless he populates it. And it doesn't mean that's where it stops. It does not stop at populating the earth. You have to do what is necessary with what you have been given to, to make earth respond to the dominion authority that you have been given by God himself. You have to subdue the earth. You have to get into the system of the world and positively affect it. Don't allow the system of the world to get into you. Don't make that mistake. He said, have dominion over. In God's plan for man... With God being the architect, the architect, within the architectural structure of God's mind, he released the decree that man would have dominion over the earth. Man's preeminence of the created order and his ability to affect his environment and whatever is in it was released from the mouth of God and it echoes today. Listen again. You have to stand and declare, I am distinguished, full, fruitful, and useful. And I'm useful. You need to declare it full, fruitful, and useful. In other words, when you're talking about distinguished, you are marked, you are special, you are separated from the rest by distinction. Hallelujah. You are different. You make the difference. You are the difference. Hallelujah. Having a, or indicating superiority, you are set apart. Oh, come on, somebody. 
Hallelujah. Chosen stewards, you are designed to be the difference and make the difference. You are designed that way. As God's original design, you were planned and conceived intentionally for a specific purpose. I'm going somewhere with this. Tell your neighbor, stay, stay, stay focused and, and just stay in tune with what God is doing right now. Hallelujah. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. You are different. You are unlike in nature. Hallelujah. You are unlike in form. You are unlike in quality. There is none like you. Hallelujah. You are distinguished. You are full. You are fruitful. You are useful. You are distinguished and set apart from the rest. Hallelujah. When you look at full, Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 to, to 10, it says here, for, I, for in him, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, bodily. Verse 10 says, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. In Genesis chapter 2, 7, we see here, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living being. Hallelujah. Second Peter 1, 3 says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. John 17 23 says it I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one. Hallelujah. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. You need to understand that you are full enough to operate at full capacity with full power with full dominion and full of his love I said you are full enough hallelujah full enough to operate at full capacity with full power with full dominion hallelujah and full of his love you are full distinguished full fruitful and useful useful enough to be used by him to change the course of things on the earth. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. You are his own special people people are you hearing me people hallelujah that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light he's got use for you you are useful you're gonna stand in the midst of all this chaos and proclaim his praises you're gonna praise him anyhow you're gonna praise him in the morning praise him in the noontime praise him in the evening praise him in the midnight hour in the midst of the chaos you will stand in your chaotic state and you will praise the Lord you will indeed hallelujah because you can hallelujah 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 21 says therefore if anyone cleanses himself from the latter he will be a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master hallelujah prepared for every good work oh my 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 are you seeing this you are prepared for every good work i'm telling you you are useful and you are full of use hallelujah his own special people called into his marvelous light that you may proclaim his praises 
I tell you this today. You are distinguished. You are full, fruitful, and useful. I'm saying it again. You are distinguished. You are full. You are fruitful. And you are useful. Hallelujah. You got to say to yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and say, self, let me tell you something. You are distinguished. You are full, fruitful, and useful. Thank you, Jesus. You see, God's heart isn't for mankind to do something for him. He didn't just send us here just to do something for him. His heart is for you to do everything with him. I want to say it again. God's heart is for you to do everything with him. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. He wants you to intentionally express him from the inside out on the earth. Hallelujah. Think about what I'm saying. Jesus prayed. Hallelujah. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in in me and I in you that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you have sent me that's in John chapter 17 but look at Ephesians Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says for we are his workmanship created in Jesus Christ for good works which God prepared beforehand hallelujah that we should walk in them I'm telling you this thing was predestined a long time ago you are prepared for what not just works good works hallelujah God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them you are distinguished full fruitful and useful that's you that's me that's us some people are told by others that they would never rise up they or, or they wouldn't make anything of themselves uh, and uh, that's because uh, of their circumstances. You know, they won't be a part of the 1%. My God. It is very sad mainly because the hearer believed every word. And some of you hearing today and you're still believing every word instead of believing the word of God. So when someone like me comes in and, and tells them, like I'm telling you today, that they are distinguished or you are distinguished, full, fruitful, and useful. It, you struggle. You struggle to believe it. You struggle to, to, to totally believe it or totally accept it. As a matter of fact, some of you just totally reject it. Why was it or why is it so much easier to believe the words of sinful, broken and lying mankind? Listen, your negative attitude towards life, especially your life. That will cause you to misinterpret and misunderstand everything that is spoken to you. So when God says do this, you will hear he meant that. When he says leave that, you will say, you, you might hear he meant take this. You got to be careful. You'll receive the bad as good and the good as bad. You would look at love for hate and hate for love. And you will mix the whole thing up. You will look at nothing for something and something for nothing. Do you really want to be his image on the earth? Have you thought about it? Have you ever stopped to think, is this what I want? You know what you want as a career choice. You know what school you want to go to. You know how, how many children you like to have. You know what type of husband you would like. You know what type of wife you may like. You, you, you know where you want to live on the earth. You know what type of house you want to live in. You know what type of car you want to drive in. But do you want to be his image on the earth? Is that part of the core of your being and your desire? Is that your greatest desire? Is that what you want? You want to be his, amb his ambassadors, his chores on the earth? Is that what you want, what you really want? If you want this, then you, you would want to change. And if you want to change, then you will stop and you would listen to uh, you will stop listening to the repeated lies that's in your mind. And you will listen to what is written in the Lamb's book of life and what God is saying to you even today. You would listen and you would listen again. You need to just tell yourself something different. Just tell yourself something different. For years, 
You have been saying the same thing to yourself over and over. Because that's what you heard. But God has been saying so many wonderful things about you. It is written. Change the way you think about yourself and do that today. Stop for a minute. Think about what you're thinking about. What is the root of your thoughts? What is the root of your thoughts? What has shaped your thought pattern? Where is all this coming from? Why do you think the way you think? Hallelujah. Listen to me, kingdom stewards. Man, woman, whoever is listening, child, boy, girl, you need to change and just get up. Get up from that state of your sinking thinking. You need to rise up and do it now. In the name of Jesus. According to Luke in the book of Luke, chapter 4, 18, let's look at it. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. I am telling you, you are distinguished, full, fruitful, and useful. You need to say to yourself, I am distinguished. I am full, fruitful, and useful. God has a plan for me, and it's a good plan. You need to calibrate to your maker's thoughts about you. You need to stop thinking what they have said about you and to you and begin to calibrate to what your master, what your maker has said about you. Don't be bound by what religion said you could not be or could never be. Listen to the voice of God. Apply the word of God to your life. Let me tell you something. The devil is not going to stop it. In, in, in Genesis, the devil tried to put man against God. In Job, the devil tried to put God against man. In Matthew, the devil tried to turn Jesus from God soon after he was baptized. After a 40-day fast, be, before Jesus did any miracles, the devil came to him. And, and he wanted him to turn stone. But Jesus said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Not some of the words. Every word. Hallelujah. That proceeds from the mouth of God. You must know what is written and you must know it for yourselves. The devil won't leave you alone for long. He left Jesus for a season, but he won't leave you alone for long. So even if you get a little break now, know that he's coming back. But thank God he will never leave you. God himself will never leave you. So even when the devil comes in, God will raise up a stand like a flood. God will raise up a standard against him. The devil will not leave you alone for long, but eventually he has no choice. He got to go. You could tell him to flee. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you don't have to stay in the same situation and allow him to plague your mind and mess with your thoughts. He is trying to recruit as many as he can to get to join him, especially in these last days. You need to tell the, the devil, get the hands. And you need to tell him what is written about you. You need to rise up with your distinguished, full, fruitful, useful self. Rise up. <laughs> Tell me something. Tell me which one of the lies you believed. Or which one of the lies you still believe. Is it the voice of someone you love? Is it the voice of someone you want to love you? Is it the voice of someone that you are seeking approval from? So you're just saying yes to everything. Is it your own voice in your head nurturing the lies? Listen to me carefully. There isn't a lie powerful enough to subdue or dissolve the truth. There isn't a lie powerful enough to subdue or dissolve the truth. And that's the truth. The truth will always triumph over all lies. 
Perhaps you've had a bad attitude towards God. You need an attitude adjustment. You need to do an IAT. A what? An IAT. What's that? Say what? IAT. An implicit association test. You need to check your attitude score. And decide to not stay there anymore. While you're at it, do a spiritual ECG on your heart. Because something ain't clicking and ticking the way it's supposed to. You need to, listen to me, there's an appointment available. So please take the appointment that's available today. You got to make the call. And when you call, Jesus will answer. And you will hear him say, you have reached your present help incorporated. Jesus. We've heard your cry before. And before you call, we've answered. Please check your inner in, calibrate and embrace the answer with faith. You know, I'm talking about Elohim, God our creator, El Shaddai, God almighty, God all sufficient, El Rohi, the Lord our, our shepherd, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, Jehovah Rapha, hallelujah, our healer, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, Jehovah Jireh, Jira, our provider, hallelujah, hallelujah, you got to understand he provide for you in the midst of the famine, Jehovah Tiskanu, hallelujah, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the commander and chief, oh come on somebody, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, Jehovah, hallelujah, Jehovah God, he is God of all, he's El Elyon, the most high God, if I were you, I will shabak him right now, shabak the Lord, praise him like you never had before, praise him like you never did before, give him glory, give him honor, he's Adonai, master of all, Yeshua, hallelujah, our God and savior, call him now, give him a call, you will understand that before you called, he answered. And he's waiting for you to embrace it by faith. God has something significant for you and for you to do. You are full enough and fruitful enough to get it done. I'm living proof of that. I didn't know this before until I embraced God, until I said yes to him. God is so absolute that he is absolutely certain that he can trust what he has set on the inside of you. He's absolutely certain about it. He is so certain that he intentionally decided to dwell in you and make you, make you and make your body his temple. You need to declare boldly, I am distinguished. I am full, fruitful, and useful. I need you to get it in your spirit because some of you feel you're nothing and you're nobody. You'll never mount up to anything and anybody. That's a lie from the bottomless pit of hell. You need to declare that you are distinguished, full, fruitful, and useful. Say it again. I am distinguished. Hallelujah. Full, fruitful, and useful. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Don't make a life investment in anything extraneous. Don't do it. Everything and anyone that is relevant or, un or, or anything that is anyone, anything or anyone that is irrelevant and unrelated to your purpose and are hindering your pathway. It's considered unprofitable and dangerous. I want to say it again. Because some of you, you got people that you need to just, I mean, if they don't want to go, scrape them off. You know, like when Job had the boils on his skin, he, he took the pot shed and he, he, he scraped. All right, that's probably a little too much. But you need to tell them it, they need to take some time off. You're going to pray for them. So <laughs> everything... And anyone that is irrelevant or unrelated to your purpose and are hindering your pathway is considered unprofitable and dangerous. Run, stewards, run. Don't invest. Not in that. 
anything of external origin that's not related to your purpose and destiny, you must intentionally reject. Romans 12.2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You are full and useful. Stop being afraid to believe. Some people are afraid to believe because you don't know for sure if it's going to work out. You don't want to be embarrassed and feel embarrassed. But you have to still believe even if it does not work out how you expect it to. I'm a living witness. Many things didn't work out how I expected it to. But it worked for my good. He worked it. Hashtag God worked it for my good. Hallelujah. You don't have anything to lose. God is still going to work it for your good. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The one that don't believe in anything or anybody, that's the one, and they don't believe for anything, that's the one you should, that should feel embarrassed. That's the one. Not the one who believes, especially those who believe in God. We don't have anything to be embarrassed about. Even if we pray about a thing and it don't work the way we pray, just know that he worked it for your good. Hallelujah. So you're going to keep praying anyhow. You're going to keep praising anyhow. You're going to keep thanking him anyhow because he's going to work it for your good. He's a, that kind of God. He's good, 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 and then good and good. He's awesome. He's great. He's mighty. He's the almighty. I'm telling you that you are full, fruitful, and useful. You got to believe it. You are distinguished by God. When we look at in the book of Judges, and I can't go through the entire thing right now, but Judges chapter 6 tells us about this man called Gideon. Gideon was a victim of the Midianite oppression. Gideon was threshing wheat behind a wine press to hide from the Midianites because he was afraid. He was full, fruitful, and useful, but he did not know it. He did not have a clue of it because his circumstances got in his way and he allowed his circumstances to get in the way and blind him. So he did not believe he would rise up to be anyone significant. As a matter of fact, he considered himself the lowest of them all. Could you imagine a man like that? Yet inside of Gideon, hallelujah, I feel this thing. Inside of Gideon was a victorious military leader, a judge a prophet whose calling and victory over the Midianites was recorded in the book of Judges come on somebody this man Gideon was a champion just as you are today Gideon was full fruitful and useful you too are a champion you are full useful hallelujah and don't forget it I always remember it you are fruitful full of fruit you're gonna produce in the name of Jesus the Christ you need to ask, ask of the Holy Spirit to teach you how to believe and how to trust in spite of the odds. In spite of your current circumstances. Ask of the Holy Spirit. Call on the Holy Spirit. A lot of people are not calling on the Holy Spirit today, but you need the Spirit of God. You need the Holy Spirit to call on the Holy Spirit. Some people are just in love with where they are. They, they continue to use it as a crutch. They use it as a comforter and they're just in love with where they are. They, they, they just love being in a low place. Lodi Bar has become their comfort zone. No, they, 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 just, they, they embrace nothingness. You need to get up. It's time to rise. Listen, it's time to get out of hiding, saints, stewards. Kingdom citizens, those that are listening, you've never received him as Lord and Savior. Accept him today. Come out of hiding. He has a plan for you and it's a good plan. Get out of hiding. Get up. You are distinguished by God for God. An approved chosen steward. An approved child of the Most High King. An approved son. An approved daughter. Hallelujah. You are full, fruitful, and you are useful to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Psalm 16, 11. Psalm 16, 11 says, you will show me the path of life. And your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. Listen, don't allow the events of one day to change your internal posture for life. Stand strong from within. Colossians chapter 1 verses 16 to 20 says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Let me tell you something. He's got use for you because he created you for himself. Hallelujah. You should be smiling and being all happy. Yes, look at this and say, me, yes, you. Yes, you. Yes. It's like, oh my gosh, yes, it's you. Colossians chapter 117 says, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Yeah. Col Col in verse eight, Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, it says here, And he is the head of all the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. God is in control of all of this. He's got this locked down and locked in. Yeah. You need to declare, I am distinguished. I am full. I am fruitful. I am useful. Hallelujah. Arise and shine. Bloom to overshadow the doom in your environment and every room. I need to tell somebody like it is. Bloom. You got to arise and shine. Bloom to overshadow the doom in the environment and every room. You can do it because you're full. You're fruitful and you're useful. Listen, even Moses, you know, when I think about this thing, even Moses did not think he was good enough to lead anyone anywhere. Moses heard the voice of God as, as the angel of God, of, of the Lord, appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. The bush never burnt to the ground. Just letting you know that. Moses was content being a shepherd in Midian. He was there because he was hiding. Why was he hiding? Because he killed an Egyptian. Another story for another time, another account. Are you with me? God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. You see, the children of Israel, they were in captivity. Pharaoh had them working as slaves and they cried out and God heard their cry. So God said, Moses... Hear what, bro, I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. And, and, and Moses was like, like how some of you have been for a while now. Moses was like, uh, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He didn't stop there. He said, hey, I don't even know your name. If the children of Israel ask, what is his name? What shall I say to them? Moses kept analyzing and rejecting. He said, hear what God, but, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. You're lying. Moses did not even stop there. He said to the Lord, oh my Lord. The thing is, I am not eloquent, neither before or since you have spoken to your servant. I wasn't able to talk good then, and I still can't talk good now. You know, I, I have some issues. You know, he said, I, I'm a little slow in speech and a little slow in tongue. So Moses kept going on, and he kept rejecting, and he just couldn't believe that God called him to go and do such a great thing. Listen, when your mind is messed up, it's messed up, you know. It will really only take God. As a matter of fact, Moses only submitted when God's anger rose against him. And God says, look, look, I've already set this thing in you, so I'm going to call Aaron to help you, or he's going to be a mouthpiece. 
Listen, this same man, Moses, was so full, fruitful, and useful that he showed remarkable courage as he journeyed through the wilderness with the children of Israel. He, his obedience level was high. The strength of character was, was at an unprecedented level as he journeyed. There were times when he got angry and he probably did what he wasn't supposed to do, but he, he, he actually did it. He got the children of Israel out. He got them out and he, he made all the excuses. He instituted the Jewish law, that which is known as the Ten Commandments today. Moses led the people of Israel to, a, to the promised land. He said, hey, it's right there. He didn't get in, but he, he led them. This man had what God placed on the inside of him all the time. He had everything on the inside and so do you. Moses was full. He was fruitful and he was useful. And you need to declare, I am distinguished by God. I am full. I am fruitful and I am useful. Stop thinking about yourself as a nobody. You can be asking God, um, you know, I, I don't understand. You sure it's me, God? You, you call that self-inflicted issues. You inflicting those things upon yourself. What is your self-inflicted issue today? Are you saying, Lord, I don't have the ability. I am a nobody. Ain't nobody even know my name. He knows your name. Yeah. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Exodus 3, it says, the Lord said, I will certainly, I will certainly be with you. What is your issue? Lord, I don't know what to say. You're, you're sure you're sending me? I don't know what to say. Luke, Luke, Luke and Luke. It says in chapter 12, verse 11. Now when, now when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. The Holy Spirit, hear me today. The Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you should say. So stop saying you can't talk. You don't know what to say. You don't have to know what to say. If the Holy Spirit knows what he's supposed to know for you to know, for you to say. Just say, hallelujah, and you will know that you know what to say after you've said it. Study the word. He'll bring it back to memory. And you'll know what to say. In that day. What is your self-inflicted issue? God, I, I, don't have, I don't have the authority. You know, I, I don't have any position, Lord. Uh, you know, I, I'm just me. I'm just me. Uh, nobody really respects me. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent you. In, had, I am has sent me into you. In other words, he's saying to you today as well, when you feel like you're nobody, you got to go with God who is in your body. Hallelujah. And got to tell somebody about the God that's in you and how much they need God. You got to trust the God in you. He's superior. He is the God that is sovereign, that reigns and rules. He has given you dominion. You need to go in, hallelujah, and release what he has placed on the inside of you. What's your self-inflicted issue are you saying i'm not a good speaker you don't know what to say let me tell you something you don't know how to say you're not eloquent in speech in exodus chapter 4 verse uh, verses 11 and 12 it says here so the lord said to him who has made man's mouth or who makes the mute the deaf the seeing or the blind have not i the lord now therefore, go, I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. There goes the excuses. You got no excuse. You got no excuse. 
Now, after you run out of excuse, you might still say, oh, my Lord, please don't send me. Send someone else. You see, God cannot accept your excuses because he knows what he placed on the inside of you. And what he placed on the inside of you is enough to override and overrule all your shortcomings, your shortfalls, all your excuses, how you feel about yourself. God is not concerned about how you feel about yourself. He wants to know what you know about yourself. Because we don't live by feelings. We live by faith. We got to believe that he knew what he was doing when he set us on earth. The Lord anger or the anger of the Lord was, was, was kindled against Moses. You don't want the wrath of God, hallelujah, to come upon you. God told him about Aaron being his mouthpiece. Whatever God has to do, he will ensure that he does it for you. So Moses finally conceded and proceeded. I want to put to you today, you need to, hallelujah, concede and proceed and do it now. Do you know that you can't run from God? So I want to strongly suggest that you stop and submit. You have to eliminate all excuses and reasons for not making intentional, decisive, and immediate decisions to rise. Lay those things aside. Don't be stuck on a treadmill. That's where your thoughts are. You're on a treadmill. You're moving, but you're going nowhere. The treadmill was meant to build you up, but it won't take you anywhere further. You have to get off and move with divine momentum as you transition. Arise. Fortify yourself with prayer and review. Hallelujah. And renew the word in your mind. Hallelujah. With the word of God, your mind shall be renewed. It's time for the divine transition with global impact. I said it's time for divine transition with global impact. It's time for divine momentum and accelerated pulsation on the earth. Release the kingdom frequency. The, the kingdom frequency. Release it. Release the kingdom frequency and shake the earth. It's time for the rise of the remnant. Rise from your resurrected state. You need to rise from there. You're you literally going to rise up from a risen place. Imagine that. Behave like the bride. It's time that we behave like the bride. Behave like you're alive and you're being prepared while you are preparing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Behave like who the king is coming back for. Stay relevant. That's a word that God has been plaguing my spirit with. Relevance. You need to stay relevant. Stay relevant. According to Genesis, failure is not my brand. It's not your brand either. Stop wearing it. Stop wearing it like a, a Nike tick. Stop wearing it. It's not your brand. You were sent, seasoned, and set for every season. And you were, you were sent by the king himself. I've accepted that I cannot take people where they don't want to go. It doesn't matter how much you invest in them, how much word you preach, you just can't take them. They will not rise because they like where they are and they are afraid that they won't make it if they move. So, I mean, all, all I got to do is preach the word. And I'm, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will get through to you in the name of Jesus. They just can't accept that they are full, fruitful, and useful. I hope I'm not talking to you today. I hope you have embraced it. You have to embrace the fact that you are distinguished by God. I don't want to know what your past looked like. I can't see it. You know why? Because it's gone. It's your past. So even if you reminisce and tell me about it, it will not impact me. Like how who you are now will impact me. God will often choose the most unlikely candidates to fulfill his purpose on, and, and his vision for life. People like Gideon, people like Moses, David, Saul, people like you, people like me. 
He looks beyond you and sees purpose and eternity. He knows your potential and capacity for good and how your broken vessel, you being a broken vessel, can fulfill his ultimate purpose for life. He knows that. He's the potter and you are the clay. Let him mold you in the way that he wants today. The problem with many people today is that they're using the unfavorable conditions as an excuse for their inaction. Like everybody talking about COVID-19, everybody talking about the pandemic, and everybody trying to see what they can do except those who don't want to do. Inaction. They are not doing anything yet because they are waiting for a perfect condition to start doing something different or something perfect. The perfect time is now. Did I just say that? Yes. Yes, just do it. Is this the right environment? Yes, it is. The perfect time is now. God is enough. You are full fruitful and useful if God is enough and God is in you guess what you are enough to do all that he said hallelujah you can and will do on the earth wait hallelujah you are asking if I can see the chaos all around yes I can yes I can but do you see do you see the God of all creation do you see God in all his splendor Somebody might say, no, I don't see him. A lot of people are dying. Well, I want to say to you, look again. Look again. He is still God. Still loving. Still suffering. He is still providing. He is still keeping. He is still saving. He is still protecting. You, you, the mere fact that you are listening to this today, you got to know that God is still. Rest and watch him do his thing. Watch him slowly, hallelujah, permeate the very atmosphere so that you can catch up with him. Watch him show himself strong and mighty above all. God has a plan. God has a plan. And it's a good plan. You need to lift up the word of God. Be useful and worship God in spirit and in truth. Lead people back to God and truth. Say something. Do not be swayed by the culture, by the cultural uh, div div divination from biblical truth. People are trying to get you to sway away from it. Don't be swayed from that. Biblical truth still stand. You can't afford to be deterred, distracted, deflected, or derailed from biblical truth. You, not now. Get into the word and get into it for yourselves. You must be completely aligned with God's biblical order. You must be synchronized with God's prophetic revelation and his saving power. You must believe. You must align with his overriding and unconditional love. We need to learn to love like God. God help me. I'm trying. You need to apply self-governance. Do some self-introspection. Manage yourself. Humble yourself. Repent. Believe. Trust God. Use the dominion power and authority, your dunamis, your exousia. Use that, hallelujah, which you have been given. You have been given it by the king himself. Listen, I have intentionally adapted or adopted two, a two in one position in life. It's two position, but it's a two in one. I am either up or going up. It's settled. I am either up or going up. I continue to declare every day. If you call me and you ask me how you're doing, you would hear me say, I am above and 
escalating. And I just don't say those words. I believe those words. It's etched on the, on the inside of me. And I'm living that. It doesn't matter how low I get. I'm still up. And I'm on the up and up. I'm getting up. It's always an upward movement for me. I'm always ascending. Hallelujah. Because my seat is right at his right hand. I'm seated in heavenly places. You need to arise and shine. Shine enough to eradicate every aspect of lingering darkness in your life. Come on somebody declare today I am distinguished. I am a distinguished citizen full, fruitful and useful. You need to know who you are. Hallelujah. God is love. Hallelujah. He, he intentionally he who is love God intentionally chose you. The time to arise is now. You have to declare. I am distinguished. By God. For God. I am. Distinguished. I, I need you to get it in your spirit. You are distinguished. By God. For God. You need to believe that you are full, you are fruitful, and you are useful. Say it with me. I am distinguished. I am full, fruitful, and useful. God chose you. Would you choose him today? Choose him. For he loves you.